tell you a story, right? Because there is a lot of people who are in crypto and you really don't know the history of this shit. You know, you, you a friend of yours was doing it and he made a couple of bucks and you was like, yeah, I'm going I'm to make me a couple of bucks too. I think I'm going to go become a Bitcoin investor. And you really don't know anything about this shit, right? Um, there are those of us who have been here a while and we've... We basically have witnessed and, and endured everything that could be possibly thrown at us, right? So I want to tell you a little story about Mount Gov, right? Or Mount Gox, or whatever you say this shit. This was the exchange. In fact, when I first purchased Bitcoin, I purchased it from this exchange right here, right? I told the story. I was one of those guys illegally importing hoverboards. <laughs> I think I just admitted to a crime. I just, I was illegally importing. Well, I didn't know I was illegally importing, but they had a dude who had a patent on the shit. And I was trying to get these hoverboards in, in the, in, in the Christmas of 2010. And the dude who owned the patent on the hoverboards, Drew his dick down on the table and said, that's my shit y'all are selling illegally. Right? And he had the biggest dick of everybody. So it got shut down. And here I was stuck. I was trying to get in 280 hoverboards that I brought for $30 each. I was selling that shit for $390. <laughs> True story. True story. And dude shut us down, right? Well, the criminal ass Asians that I was dealing with, because I told you, I've been dealing with criminal ass Asians for a long time, guys. When, when I use, no, let me, let me just digress for a second. When I use the term criminal ass Asians, it don't, that, that's not something that derived from crypto trading. Actually, it derives from selling bounce houses, what you call bounce houses. Right. I was one of the first customers of Alibaba. I'm talking about 1998. And at this time, I am one of the biggest party rental companies in New Orleans. That's what I'm doing. I have I'm, I'm, I'm doing birthday parties and events. When and I'm going to get to this story. Just hold on. But I like to tell stories. So when a friend of mine comes to me, he says, hey, man, he owns a fellow company. Right. He's the guy who started the party bus. Whenever you see these annoying ass things going around your city what people have converted school buses into clubs and you got girls twerking their ass out the window. Well, my friend is the one the one in this story is the one who invented that shit. Right. So my friend is like, hey, bro, you know, I came across this ad and I don't really take chances and shit. But you do. You're a gambler. I'm not. And I don't have no money to be losing. But these spacewalks, we call them spacewalks in New Orleans, these moon bounces or moon bouncy castles that we're spending $3,800 for, we can get this shit from 300, for $300 in China. I'm like, fuck you talking about? What? So my gambling ass, I, I brought three, not knowing anything about the company. I brought three. They sent me the three. I was like, holy shit, that worked. So now I am buying, importing these castles into the country. So something told me, well, see if they can make one for you, right? See if they can design a castle for you. So they designed the castle for me, right? And I called because my daughter had a birthday coming. So <clears throat> I called the castle a mining castle. It's the name of my daughter. I wanted that castle here for her birthday. They got the castle here for the birthday, right? And you know what the criminal ass Asians did after that? After they sent my original design for that castle for in time for my daughter's birthday, they turned around and put my shit on their website and started selling it. And I said, what the fuck? That's my design. And they say, well, you only ordered a minimum of one quantity and we have all this extra material. So we just figure we'll just keep selling it. Bruh. Fifth, that was fucking 20 something years ago and if you go to this bouncy house castle to this day my fucking daughter my daughter's fucking spacewalk castle is still on that site 
So my hatred of these bitches didn't just start recently. Okay. <laughs> this shit goes back to 1998 when they took my daughter's shit and started selling it on their fucking site. But anyway, here I am. I'm dealing with these fucking criminal ass Asians again. Because in order, to, whether it's bouncy castles, whether it's hoverboards, I have had a long history dealing with these criminal ass fucking Asians. And I thought I got away from them all the way to this shit that you're watching right here. All right. That's my cock shit. I got caught up in this shit, too. OK. And I told you, whenever Asians run into liquidity issues, they quickly become victims these motherfuckers have mastered the art of going from the villain in the story to the victim in 3.5 fucking seconds. They create bullshit. They, they kick up bullshit. They start bullshit. Then they hide their fucking hand and become victims. They start a world war. Then they be like, oh, you motherfuckers dropped the bomb on us. How fucking dare you? That's what the fuck they do. I'm just letting you know. They quickly become victims. Now, this was white boys involved in this shit, but behind this scam right here, behind this my god shit, was a fucking Asian. The face of it was a white boy, but behind this shit was criminal ass Asians. And remember what I said. Whenever they run into liquidity issues, I don't give a fuck what it is. They become victims. FTX didn't have the money. So the next thing, now FTX is saying that they are a victim of a targeted attack from Binance. Their, their, their defense right now in the Southern District of New York is, hey, we wasn't running a scam. We were the victims of another criminal as Asians. Asians. So here you have Asian on Asian crime playing out. But this was my first red flag that I ignored. Okay. I, I ignored it. I said, yeah, this could have happened. This was a possibility. This is, you know, this in February, 2014, my guy suspended trading, closed his website and exchange services and filed for bankruptcy from creditors in April, 2014. The company began liquidation proceedings. Although 200,000 Bitcoins have since been found, the reason for the disappearance, theft, fraud, mismanagement, or a combination of these were initially unclear. What the fuck you mean it was initially unclear? It was clear. We knew what happened, right? But I keep telling you, these fucking white boys and these Asians are the Bambis of crime, okay? Nobody believes that these motherfuckers are as criminal as they really are until they do criminal shit. And then you, then, he, then the stories will be like, well, he was just from a normal family with two hardworking, you know, Asian parents who ran a fucking Korean corner store. And who knew that he would turn out? He fucking knew he would turn out like that. He knew he was going to do that shit. Because we're too trusting to these motherfuckers. And this was a case right here where the world was too fucking trusting. But this was also how they learned how to do it. See, the last thing I wanted to tell you, last story I want to tell you about this shit is they got away with it. They got away with it. They were allowed to steal from themselves and get away with it. So when I call Bitcoin a scam, guys, you have to understand, right, that when you're dealing with a, a, a organized racketeering or what the feds call RICO, at the core of all RICO cases is a curriculum, Okay. That's that's what that's how they build the case. They originally discovered that this there was a conspiracy to commit. There was an effort. There was a class. There was a, a tutoring. There was lessons. There was lineage. Lineage. There was you know ideology. 
there was a fucking scam curriculum in play here. And when you have a scam curriculum, right? You have students. You have students. You have graduates. <laughs> and you've witnessed countless of crypto exchanges shut down, withdraw, block withdrawals, suspend trading, make it impossible for you to get your fucking money out of it. Guys, that started here. That started right here. See the writing on this shit? Criminal ass fucking Asians. This was the exchange. This was the exchange. When I went to this shit back in the day to sign up, this was an exchange. Look at this shit now. Huh? So when I call these motherfuckers criminals, this is some coyote roadrunner shit that goes back 20 years, over 20, 20 fucking years of me dealing with criminal ass Asians. And there's no way to get around them because their fucking tentacles are in everything. And as I said, there is no, do not do business with these fucking people. You do business with them. You need to understand that going into this shit, they already have an exit strategy. And that exit strategy involves them escaping with your fucking money. And then when you get them in a corner, and you're like, give me my fucking money. I'm going to slap the piss out you. They immediately turn into, oh, who's her? Don't here, don't hurt me. Oh, I'm just, I'm just a little criminal. I'm not a, I'm not a big, vicious, mean criminal. I didn't, I, uh, 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 I, I didn't mean to do it. Like, like you fucking Godzilla and they're the ones that run. Stay the fuck away from these people. Don't go to business with them. Okay. Am I saying all Asians are fucked up? No, only the ones you're entering into a business deal with though. If that shit involves money, the Asian that you are negotiating with is fucked up. Okay. Have I made myself clear? 